Let's talk about OBS. OBS or Open Broadcast Software is the de facto standard for broadcasting on sites like Twitch, YouTube, Hitbox, you name it. It's easy enough for just about anyone to pick up and use, but robust enough to enable various kinds of broadcast from video game streams to video shows and podcasts. This is the reason that broadcasters that are both starting out and all the way up to full-time streamers rely on OBS to run their show. On top of having various kinds of input and compositing options, OBS is entirely free, so there's nothing stopping you from just getting OBS right now. You might think that being free in some way compromises the quality of the broadcast, but that's just not true in this case. There's a probably a 50% chance that any random stream you find on Twitch, whether there be 5 viewers or 5,000, is powered by OBS. Also, the gameplay you're watching right now is recorded using OBS, so if content creation is your goal, OBS is a great first stop to hit as you begin browsing through software. If you're looking to get started with OBS, we've got you covered. We'll go over many of the options you'll have to work through to help you get a basic understanding of OBS settings. This guide isn't an end-all be-all for OBS, but our hopes are to give you the tools to start broadcasting on your own, if that's your thing. First, in general settings, there's not much except the dark mode toggle, which some people really like. The other notable toggle is automatically record when streaming. Not everyone will use this, but when you start streaming more, the value of recording your broadcasts locally is more prevalent, so it's worth taking note of the option. Stream archives can eventually take up a lot of space, so make sure you do have that space available if this toggle is on. The next option is the stream tab. This is where you're going to pick what service you broadcast to. Any major service is here, but in the off chance that it's not, there is a custom streaming option available so you can manually enter in your stream URL. For the server, usually the closest server is best, but there are pinging tools available if you want to dig in a little bit. And your stream key should be readily available from your streaming dashboard. Output is where things start to get really techy. For this video, we'll be sticking to the simple output mode and talk through the settings here. The first and most important setting is video bitrate. This number basically dictates the quality of your broadcast. The higher your bitrate, the better looking your video will be. Some sites have pretty strict upper limits for bitrate, like Twitch for instance caps you out at about 3500 kilobits per second, but especially starting out, you'll want to set it a little bit lower than that even. When you start streaming on Twitch, the bitrate you broadcast is also the bitrate your viewers will be watching, so a high bitrate HD video could potentially be difficult for your viewers to stream. It's important to take that under consideration when you start your stream. For the sake of this video, we'll stick to 2000 kilobits per second. That's a pretty good sweet spot for quality and also accounting for bandwidth demands of your viewers. There are fancy charts out there with good breakpoints for bitrate, but we'll just save that for some other day where we can nerd out together over numbers. The encoder is something you will probably have to play with. I have mine set to the X264 encoder, which is pretty taxing on my CPU. There is a GPU option available for me, so if these options are available to you, it's worth trying both to see which works best. If you have a reasonably powerful gaming computer, either option will probably be fine, but if your game has a high CPU requirement, you could try to stream with the GPU-based option, or vice versa. A common theme you might be picking up on is that testing out different options is perfectly fine. Every computer is just a little bit different, so the solutions for these things could also be a little bit different. Audio bitrate is exactly like video bitrate, so the same rules apply. The higher the number, the better you'll sound. Twitch sets a strict 160 kilobits per second, which is more than enough. In this application, the higher option of 192 already has diminishing returns on your average speakers, so you don't have to worry about too much audio quality loss. If you're deciding to record, most of the default settings are probably okay for you. For this starting out guide, I'd strongly suggest you just make sure the videos are going to the right place and leaving the recording quality the same as your stream. If you ever decide to change this option, it will push a completely separate video to render, which could double your encoding load. That's a lot of words to say your computer will work extra hard to do this, so I'd say don't worry about it too much early on. Next up in the audio tab, you'll really just want to make sure things are connected to the right place. Everyone has weird audio setups, so if this looks a little bit weird for you, it's fine. Just make sure your system audio is in your desktop device and your microphone is connected correctly. You'll be able to see and hear if you did this right later, but this menu is pretty basic. There's plenty of space here for a variety of different things, so keep note of them all, but let's just keep things basic for now. The video tab is our last stop in settings for today. This is where you're going to set your base resolution for your stream. 
This is also where a certain degree of efficiency is lost on me because you can either set your base resolution to 1280 by 720 and keep your output resolution the same, or you can set your base resolution to your monitor resolution, 1920 by 1080 in my case, then scale it down to 1280 by 720 in the output resolution. Again, this is a surprisingly techy part of the settings menu, but I'd say for the sake of this video, keep the base resolution at whatever your monitor is, then scale your output to 1280 by 720 or 720p. The other option you'll want to hit is you'll want to set your frame rate to 30 FPS. I'm going to assume you're probably used to playing games at 60 FPS, but streaming that kind of video is pretty demanding, so we'll literally cut the frame rate and the CPU and bandwidth demands in half as well. There are other options available, which I suggest you look at at some point, but for now we can actually get started streaming, so let's get over to the scene builder. When you start OBS, you should probably just have a blank window looking back at you. The first thing we'll do is add our first scene. The names don't matter, they're more for your organization, so I'll name my scene Best Scene Ever. The basic component of a gaming stream is the game. For this, the simplest way to get your game in OBS is display capture. This will just pick up your whole monitor. Actually, doing that in this video will look awful, so I'll add some gameplay so you can see what it might look like for you. If you find that whatever you add doesn't quite fit correctly, an easy fix you can do is to right-click the source and then go to Transform, Fit to Screen. That will just fit it automatically for you. The next thing you might want is a webcam. If you have a webcam, you would add it with the video capture device source. This is also likely where you'd add a capture card if you were using one. The video capture source has a bunch of settings for your webcam if they are available to you. The last thing you might want for your stream is an intermission screen. You might not have actual graphics or anything, so just substitute in something cool instead. First, add a scene for the intermission screen, then decide what you'll want to be there. For me, I've got this sweet gif of R2-D2 that I've been waiting to use, so we'll go with that. OBS has a convenient image source that can load in a variety of different image types, like this GIF for instance. If you want to add some text here so people know what's up, you can also do that using the built-in text source. With that, you should be ready to stream. Like I said, don't be afraid to play with the settings and figure out what works best for you. And again, I'd strongly suggest you use this video guide as more of a baseline for your experience, and not necessarily the definitive guide to OBS forever and everything else is wrong. My hope is that I've helped demystify some of the settings enough for you to be able to tweak and change things for yourself with confidence.